Hello again humans, this is Dr. Kai and this is another episode of Sailing Amongst the Stars. Behold the Milky Way. It is a vast bustling city of light and activity, one of many billions of galaxies in the vast cosmos. In this episode, we're going to try to grasp how big it really is, and another lesson in training our minds to learn the vast distances of the cosmos. We're going to cross all the way from home to the very core itself, a place that has never been seen before with telescopes because it is obscured with dust. In the first episode, we learnt what one light year really feels like and then we went all the way up to a hundred. And the episode after that, when we were ready, we learnt how to grasp up to a thousand light years. In this episode, we're going to do 30,000. So we're going to learn what 10,000 feels like and we're going to extrapolate all the way up to a hundred thousand light years, which is about the radius of our galaxy. As usual, we're going to be starting at Earth, our home, but this time instead of pointing away from it towards the Orion Molecular Complex, we're going to be pointing towards the core. You can kind of think of the core as the city, and we kind of live in the quiet suburbs surrounding the city. We actually exist in a mini arm that stretches between two of the major spiral arms of the galaxy, the Sagittarius arm and the Perseus arm. It's called the Orion Spur, and it's our home. It's not very dense over here, in fact the density compared to the core is minute. Over here you'd be lucky to find one star every cubic parsec, and remember a parsec is about 3 light years, and it can be as many as one star every 10 cubic parsecs, whereas in the core, estimates range from 100 to even a 1000 stars every cubic parsec. So it's going to be a very busy place and it's going to be quite exciting to go there for the first time. As you can see, in preparation of our trip I've turned up the brightness levels of the stars, beyond natural limits, so we can see them from further. This helps us better visualise and understand the density of the stars that we're passing, because the goal of this series, the Learning to Fly series, is to try and get a good grasp of these great distances between the stars and between the galaxies. In this voyage, we're going to go 30,000 light years and we're going to end up right in the centre of the core of the galaxy. 30,000 light years, that's 30 times further than what we did in our previous trip. So of course I'm going to have to go a lot faster. I'm going to start off at speeds we're familiar with, and we're now at our cruising speed of 1 Alpha Centauri distance per second, 4 light years per second, give or take. But I'm going to keep on doubling it as we go along, and we're going to try and get familiar with those speeds before we move on to the next. And so this is the speed that we're quite familiar with now, but it is too slow. At this speed it will take 2 hours to get to our destination. And while it would be a brilliant way to kick back with a beer and relax, I think we're going to speed up a bit to shorten that. And so I've doubled our speed now to 2 Alpha Centauri distances per second, 8 light years per second, and with the brightness much higher than it was before, let your eyes wander to the more distant stars that you can see further away, and see them unravel as we move closer towards them, and get a better feel for the density of stars. Still a bit too slow, so I'm going to double our speed again to 16 light years per second. And let me briefly dim the stars to their natural levels so you can see what this would really look like. Notice how some stars can be seen from so far away, and they really take a long time to arrive, whereas other stars only briefly appear as they come very close. And it reinforces the fact that when we're static, we really have no idea, just from visual reference, how far away a star is. And when the stars are turned up this bright, which gives us the ability to see them from so far away, it really helps us visualise how many stars there are. And it goes a long way to dispelling the illusion that there aren't that many. And I've just doubled our speed again to 32 light years per second. And this speed is going to emphasise how many stars there really are, just by the fact that we're going to be passing even more per second now. And I'm going to target Sol, our home system, so we can keep track of the distance between us and it as we move away. There really are a lot of stars and this is a very, very useful exercise. I don't know about you, but whenever I read about a star cluster or a nebula, I kind of put together small numbers in my head, like, oh, there's this many star clusters and that's where they are. But really, as you can see, this endless, endless ocean of stars that we're passing contains so many clusters and we're going to be passing nebulae and globular clusters and so many big stars and small stars. And the numbers are really unfathomable. It really is an ocean. 
That is the most important lesson I want you to take away from this episode. And now we're going to double our speed again to 64 light years per second and this is a ridiculous speed. As you can see, even the bright stars are whooshing past in a complete blur. Before we were cruising along but now it's like we're in a sports car in terms of intragalactic speeds. It's a bit easier to get a sense of our speed if we look sideways. So take a look sideways and look at what we're passing and how fast we're passing it. Look at that extremely distant star cluster, look how fast it's going by. The galaxy is opening up in this sense, this is one of those speeds where we're really bordering on seeing details of the galaxy itself begin to move. And if I begin to move up and down through the galactic plane, we're actually moving at a speed where you can see the dust clouds themselves, those great dust lanes that thread their way across the galaxy move, and you can actually see their shapes changing due to parallax. Oh, and there's Sagittarius, the dwarf spheroidal galaxy. That is uh, one of our satellite galaxies around the Milky Way, um, and it's extremely interesting. We're going to have to do something on that. It's basically collided with our galaxy a dozen times, and there's even a theory that our sun was born there and got seeded into our galaxy through one of those collisions. It contains about 50 million stars. It's directly above the galaxy, but on the exact opposite side of the core. Now, directly in our path is a globular cluster. We're going to do a flyby of it, and as you can see, they are stunningly gorgeous places. They're like the mini version of that dwarf galaxy that I pointed to you. And there's many of them in our galaxy as you can see. And we're definitely going to come back to them because scientifically they are fascinating and there's so much to talk about. As I said, you can really start to see the macro details of the galaxy start to move. You can see the core approaching, you can see the strands of those dust clouds. There's thousands of light years across some of them begin to move and their shapes come alive. As we pass the 10,000 light year mark from Sol, we are starting to see more clearly into the core. We have passed through much of the cosmic dust that obscures it normally. Let's talk a bit about that cosmic dust. What is it? Well, it is indeed tiny dust particles of all sorts. Small molecules that are rarely bigger than a particle of smoke. And even though they might look very thick, they are not. That dust is everywhere in the galaxy. And outside it too. And the strands you can see are thousands of light years long. I'm going to turn the brightness of the stars back to their normal level now, so you can see more directly these clouds that I'm talking about. They may look thick, but they're not. In fact, in our region of space, if you were in a car, you'd have to drive about a thousand kilometers before you collide with one of these tiny dust particles. And that's representative of the general density of these clouds. It's just that we are looking through thousands and thousands of light years of them. They begin to obscure our vision and now it's easier to make out their shapes and they really do feel like clouds now that I've doubled our speed to 128 light years per second which is an unfathomable speed look at this huge nebula flash by one of many thousands of nebulae like it in the galaxy and look at how all the stars are now streaming past us in a blaze and here comes another one of those nebulae and we're starting to orbit the core a bit now we're at one of those speeds where we really can see the macro features of the galaxy moving we can see the galaxy itself moving underneath us and here comes another globular cluster, these very ancient collections of stars. This one's rather diffuse compared to the previous one. We are now slowing down to pass through it, going so slow that you can't even see the galaxy beneath it moving anymore. It just goes to show how large the galaxy is and how amazing a view we have from here. The globular clusters are usually located outside the disk of the Milky Way, orbiting it in the halo, where all the dark matter is. Some of them get the most stunning views. Anyway, now let's move into the core. The core is bright because the dust inside it is being lit up by the sheer quantity and density of the stars there. Generally, when we point a telescope at a spiral galaxy outside our own, the core outshines the arms, and we need special filters to be able to see them. As you can see, even though I haven't turned up the brightness yet, there are more stars passing us. But now I've turned the brightness up and you can really see the sheer bustle and density of the stars around us. It's a stunning place. And as you can see, it's going to get thicker and thicker the further we get in. We're now over 25,000 light years from home. 
and the amount of stars, the amount of just stuff in general between us and home is scary. It's actually quite terrifying how far away we are. There's no direct line between us and home anymore. There is just endless, endless amounts of stars. And we're now in a place that has never been seen before because it's completely obscured by dust. This is actually quite special to be here. Let's head right to the very centre of it all. The busiest place in the galaxy where the supermassive black hole is. And as you can see, something extremely bright resides in the centre of this cluster here. It is the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star, the powerhouse of our galaxy, the anchor of the galaxy itself. And it is a thousand times brighter than the sun, simply from the friction of the gas that's falling into it as it circles and plunges its way in. Just look at how many stars there are here, at the very centre of the core. I'm actually going to turn the brightness down so we can pay more attention to what's going on. It is believed that most galaxies have these at their centre, and they are a driving force within the galaxy. And as you can see, if I turn up the speed, you can see all these stars that are nearby starting to orbit around it. And eventually it will gobble up most of them. And if it doesn't, it will send them flying out of the galaxy at high speeds. Now bear in mind that this black hole, Sagittarius A star, is about as old as the galaxy itself about 10 billion years and it's been feeding all that time and in that time it's consumed about 4 million suns worth of material. Now I've left time going at a fast rate so that you can see its accretion disk is actually spinning around it. That accretion disk is about as big as our solar system and if it were centered on our solar system it would reach all the way past Neptune. All of that stuff, suns worth of stuff, we're talking trillions of trillions of kilograms of matter are falling in, and the closer you get to the black hole, the faster they're moving. They approach the speed of light, and the friction that is caused produces all this brightness that you can see. So I'm targeting Sol, and you can see we're 28,000 light years from home. I've returned time to normal, and even though it's moving at close to the speed of light, you still can't see it, that's how huge it really is. And as we park at the edge of the accretion disk, which is about 30 billion miles from the black hole, you can actually already see space starting to distort around the black hole due to gravitational lensing. And now we're going to move closer and it's going to get very strange. The amount of distortion of space and time itself is massive. You can actually see all the stars that have gathered around ready to be consumed by the black hole in the backdrop, starting to really warp now. And soon you'll start to see them blue shift. But this is not an episode about black holes. This was an episode about learning the distances involved in terms of the size of galaxies. So we did 30,000 light years today, and I hope you got a good feel for it, and I hope that it was serenely beautiful as it should have been. Remember that the entire galaxy itself is 100,000 light years across, give or take. So you can extrapolate the size of the galaxy now with the knowledge you've gained in this episode, and I do recommend you watch it again. It's an extremely useful tool for your brain to have, and it will only add to your pleasure and the sheer wonder that your mind experiences when it starts to contemplate these vast distances. What's next is to take this knowledge and try and fathom the distances between galaxies and eventually all the way out to the size of the universe itself. But let's slow down, let's pull out, let's zoom out, look down upon the galaxy and just take a look at the distance we did. And there you go, there's Sol, and that's 30,000 light years to the core of the journey we just did. I hope it's been immensely useful to you. I hope that it's given you what to think about and it's helped you in your quest to understand the scales and the size of the universe. Watch it again, digest it, because in the next episode we're going much further. So long humans.